What do the numbers 3, 7, and 31 have in common? Well, all of these three numbers are odd in prime, but upon closer inspection, they share another property. They are all one less than a power of 2. These are the first Mersenne primes, a subset of the prime numbers, one of the most ancient and mystical topics in mathematics. Now, let's play this game again. What do the numbers 6, 28, and 496 have in common? This time, it's much less obvious. In addition to being even numbers, all of these numbers are equal to the sum of their factors, if you exclude the original number, of course. These are the perfect numbers, another curiosity of number theory known since antiquity. Both of these sets of numbers are, somewhat famously, shrouded in conjecture and speculation. It's not known whether there are an infinite number of Mersenne primes, or whether an odd perfect number exists. Even more mysterious, though, is the fact that these two seemingly unrelated areas of math are intimately linked. For every Mersenne prime, a perfect number can be constructed. So why? Well, perhaps taking another look at the factors of our three perfect numbers can give us a clue. Take a few seconds to search for a link between the two topics, maybe even an underlying pattern. The intended observation is that every perfect number has exactly one odd factor, which is, wait for it, a Mersenne prime. But that's not the only pattern of note. The factors that are less than the Mersenne prime are the powers of 2 that precede it, and the larger factors are all one of those powers of 2 times the Mersenne prime itself. In fact, the perfect number is equal to the product of the Mersenne prime and the largest power of 2. These patterns were noted by famed geometer and number theorist Euclid of Alexandria. It was him, 2400 years ago, that proved that a Mersenne prime times the largest power of 2 smaller than it must be a perfect number. In his proof, he formalizes this product into this expression, so it's worth deconstructing it. Think of it like a template for creating perfect numbers. P represents a prime number and each factor corresponds to one we've already identified. The second one is the Mersenne prime. By definition, it's prime and is one less than a power of two. As such, we'll call it part M for Mersenne. The first factor is the power of two that precedes the Mersenne prime. We'll call that one part T. Now, do you notice anything interesting about the relationship between parts M and T, something integral to a possible proof? If you have a better mathematical intuition than I, and trust me, there are a lot of you, you might have noticed that the sum of part T's factors is equal to part M, the Mersenne prime. The reason for this is actually quite intuitive. Because part T is a power of 2, all of its factors will also, by definition, be other powers of 2, because 2 is part T's only prime factor. So the list of its factors will be 1, 2, 4, 8, etc., all the way up to part T itself. Now, let's start adding up these factors. 1 plus 2 equals 3, which is 1 less than 2 squared. Because the next factor in this list, 4, is by definition our next power of 2, if we add it to our running sum, we get 7, 1 less than the next next power of 2, 8. Of course, the next factor is also 8, which brings our running sum to 15, 1 less than 16, the next 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 power of 2. And thus, this pattern continues until we exhaust every factor our running sum will always be 1 less than the next power of 2. So by the time we get to our last factor, part t, our running sum will be 1 less than the next largest power of 2, which of course is part m, the Mersenne prime. While we're on the topic of part t's factors, how else can they be conceptualized? A concept that might come to mind is the geometric sequence. To review, a geometric sequence is a series of numbers where each term is a multiple of the previous one. Term n plus 1 is found by multiplying term n by a constant, called the ratio. Back to our problem, the next factor of part t can be found by multiplying the previous one by 2. So this list can be said to be a geometric sequence starting at 1 with a ratio of 2. The last term of the series is of course part t itself. As we've established, the sum of this series is part m, the Mersenne prime. To make future equations easier to read, I'll refer to part m and part t as m and t. So, if we can represent the terms of part t as a geometric sequence, could we do the same thing for all of the factors of our perfect number template? Well, it turns out we're halfway there. Remember, the factors of a perfect number are either ascending powers of 2 or ascending powers of 2 times a Mersenne prime, both of which are geometric series, and we already know the sum of the first one, part m. So if we can find the sum of the second one, 
We can add both sums together to find the total sum of the factors of this expression, hopefully proving that it will equal the expression itself. So, how can we construct the second series? Well, they're all powers of 2 times m, the Rosen prime, so we can construct another geometric series that starts on m with the same ratio and length of our original series. So, the series will be m, 2m, 4m, 8m, etc. By definition, this series will be proportional to the first series because they have the same ratio. We can derive this series by multiplying our original series by part m. We also know that it can't contain any of the same terms as the first series because they are proportional by a number which, by definition, is prime. Now, because we know the sum of the first series to be m, which is equal to 2 times part t minus 1, because it's simply the next power of 2 minus 1, we can simply multiply it by part m to find the sum of our second series. The result is 2 times m times t minus m. The last step we need to take to find the sum of the factors of this expression is to add the sum of the first series to the sum of the second series. The result is 2 times m times t, which means the sum of the factors of our perfect number template, part m times part t, is 2 times part m times part t. This template really does create perfect numbers. Yeah, okay, this isn't quite what we started with. There's an extra 2 in there. So, was this whole video just a giant ploy to waste your time with nonsense math? Uh, no. Remember, when determining whether a number is perfect, we don't include the number itself as a factor. Because a number plus itself is just 2 times that number, we need to divide our expression by 2 to compensate for the extra factor. And voila! We've just shown that if a number is the product of a percent prime and the largest power of 2 smaller than it, it must be perfect. Congratulations! So, is this the end of the story? Come on, this is math. Of course it's not. For example, does this relationship go both ways? Can every perfect number be used to find a Mersenne prime? The answer is... kinda. We know, at least, that every even perfect number can be used to find a Mersenne prime, a proof for which we can thank Euler, who just had to prove everything, I guess. I won't explain the whole proof here, because do I sound like a math professor to you? But broad strokes, it starts by factoring the perfect number into the product of a power of 2 and an odd number, then proving that the odd number must be a Mersenne prime. Speaking of those, however, we don't even know if odd perfect numbers exist, and if they do, what their factors look like. But even in the context of these unknowns, the connection between Mersenne primes and perfect numbers is astonishing, and the proof that links them elegant. This is truly one of my favorite pieces of math.